is Ticket to Ride. This is a board game from Days of Wonder. It can be played with two to five people. It takes around 30 to 60 minutes to play. And this is a game where players are competing to connect to different cities by claiming different railway routes on the map of North America. Now let's take a look at the game and how it plays and how it works. Okay, now let's take a look at what comes in the box. Of course, we have the rule book, which is very easy to follow, and it is only three pages long. Very nice rule book. We have the map. This is a math map of North America. It shows many different cities connected by different colored train routes. Around the outside edge of the map, you will see the score track. This is where each player will keep track of what their score is throughout the game. Right here, we have a little reference that tells you how many points each route is worth, and we will talk about that more in detail here in just a little bit. Starting here, we have a reference card that contains that same information, the amount of points the different routes are worth. On the back, it tells you how many of each colored train car there are in the train car deck. Right here, at the end of the game, the player that has the longest continuous train route will get 10 extra points, and that's what this card represents, and we will go into more detail later about that. Right here, we have our deck of destination tickets. These are cards that players will acquire throughout the game. And on the card, it will try, it will tell you, it will show you two cities and where they are on the map. And you are trying to connect these two cities. And if at the end of the game you connect these two cities, you will get however many different points, which in this one it's nine. If you do not connect those two cities by the end of the game, you will lose that many points. And then right here we have our train car deck. This deck consists of eight different colored train cars, which you will use. You will have a hand of these cards, and you will use them to claim different train routes throughout the game. And then there is a wild card that you can use for any color. Right here, we have our wooden score markers, one for each player, depending on what color you choose. And then we have our bag of train cars that each player will be using to place on the map when they claim a route. Now let's take a look at how you set the game up. Okay, let's talk about how to set the game up. To begin with, you will place the board in the center of the table. You will give each player their set of 45 train cars. Each player can choose which color they want. Each player will then take their wooden score marker and place it at the beginning spot on the score track which represents a zero. At that point, you will take the deck of train car cards, shuffle it, and you will deal out four to each player. Once you have done that, you will place the deck within reaching distance of all players and you will turn over the top five cards of the deck. Then you will take the deck of destination ticket cards and you will deal out three to each player. You will place the remaining destination ticket cards near the board. I usually just place them in a blank spot on the board that doesn't interfere with anything on the board. Each player will look at their hand of three destination tickets, and they may keep all three if they want, but they have to keep at least two of those cards, and they will keep those cards secret from, any other, from all other players. If a player decides to get rid of one of the destination tickets, they will place it on the bottom of the destination ticket deck. Now, the reason that a player may want to get rid of a destination ticket is because they may have one that they 
that is very difficult, say from Seattle to Miami, that they do not think they will be able to complete by the end of the game. Once you have done that, you will place the, continu the longest continuous route card near the board. I usually place it in a blank spot on the board. And you will decide who goes first. Play will continue in clockwise direction. Okay, now the object of the game is to score the highest total points by the end of the game. And there are three ways to score points. Claiming a route will score you a certain amount of points depending on how long the route is. For example, this one is four trains long. And if you look at our little score key here, it will tell you that a route that is four train cars long will score you seven points. The second way to collect points in the game is to complete one of your destination ticket cards by claiming train routes that connect two cities. In this example, we have Helena to Los Angeles. If you connect those two cities by the end of the game, you will collect eight points. Now looking at the map here, here's Helena and here is Los Angeles. So if you have that destination ticket, as long as you connect these two cities in some way, you will be able to collect those points at the end of the game. It could be the shortest possible path, or you could go all the way around the map. As long as they're connected, you will get those points. However, you will lose those points at the end of the game if you do not connect those two cities. And the final way to collect points is to be the player that has the longest continuous path by the end of the game. That will get you 10 points. Now, on your turn, you have three different things that you can do, and you may only do one of these things on your turn. You can draw train cards, you can claim a single route on the map, or you can draw more destination tickets. Now let's look at each one of those actions in greater detail. Okay, now as I was saying, one of the actions that you can take on your turn is to draw train car cards. If you choose to do this, that will be the only action you can take on your turn because remember, each player is only allowed to take one of the three actions on their turn. When you draw train car cards, you are able to draw two train car cards. You can either draw them from the face down deck or you can draw them from the face up pile of cards, but there is one exception to that, the wild card. If you choose to take the wild card, that will be the only card that you can draw on your turn. So you would take the wild card and that would end your turn and you would replace it. Okay. Now, for your two cards that you draw, you can either draw them both from the deck. So say it's red player, the red player's turn. He chooses to draw both of his cards blindly from the deck. And you might do that if none of the cards that you need or one of the five face-up cards. You can draw both cards from one of the five face-up cards, unless you choose to draw a wild, and then that will be the only one that you can take. So say it is the green player's turn, and the green player needs both the red train car and the blue train car because there are certain routes on the map that they are trying to complete. As soon as you take one of these five face-up cards, you immediately replace it. green player would then add those cards to their hand. And it's also worth mentioning that there is not a hand limit in this game. You can have as many cards in your hand as you want. And then another option is you could draw one card blindly from the deck and one of the face-up train cards. Just keep in mind that if you do decide to take a wild card, that is the only card that you can draw on your turn. If the deck runs out, you will reshuffle the discard pile to create a new deck. 